Hello and welcome to this assignment walkthrough video for the DHIS2 curriculum developed by Logical Outcomes. My name is Nicholas Santillo and in this video I'm joined by Georgi Chakarov and together we look at the difference between program indicators and indicators. And in this video we're focusing on program indicators. Okay, uh, here I'm back here with Georgi. Hey Georgi. Hi again, Nick. Hey, and uh, yeah, we'll just look at the difference. We just looked at uh, how to create pr indicators. So let's look at program indicators because they're slightly different. But uh, so we're just going to focus on the differences. Uh, so Georgie is going to take us there first, going to the programs attributes app. And when in there, we're going to have to go to the program, select, uh, choose which program we want to look at. He left clicked on it and then chose view program indicators. Uh, we're looking at a program that we don't have any indicators for at the moment, so that's fine. We'll just look at how it looks when you click Add New. And it should look similar to uh, how you create a program, how you create an indicator in general. So you start off with the same stuff. Uh, you can uh, use decimals if you'd like, but let's go down and actually see what this looks like. So um, we have two uh, sides to it now. We have an expression and we have a filter. So uh, the expression in and of itself is the same thing. Uh, you select the program stage that you'd like and uh, in the program stage you have your elements and you can add and subtract them just as normal. But we also have these tabs. Uh, we have attributes and we have variables and constants. So the attributes are the attributes that you would have chosen for uh, this uh, tracked entity that you're looking at. So if, if it's a teacher uh, who's put in their name, then that could be one of the attributes. Um, we might not have any attributes within this. Um, and this, I think, is because these attributes are not a written, I should say. Uh, these attributes are names. They're not numbers, is what I mean. So we, we can't do an expression with these attributes because none of the attributes are numbers, if that makes sense. And then the variables. Uh, you can look at the execution date, due date, all this sort of stuff. And then once again, you can also choose constants. Um, yeah, you can have event count, enrollment count, constant. We don't have any constants in our system, but Georgie talked about that well at the end of the programs. Now, let's go down to the um, filter, because that's what's a little bit more important. Because we, we have a formula. We can say, you know, this plus this, or this minus that. Any formula, just like in the indicators. But we also have a filter, which is applied uh, in specific cases. So you're only going to use your, uh, you're only going to have the system calculate this indicator when it meets the filter. So you might say if if this teacher's trained is equal to uh, something or greater than something or over one. Uh, say let's go into uh, variables, Georgie. Uh, let's we, we want to say maybe that um, the the value count is over one. Uh, or the current date is equal to the enrollment is later than the enrollment date um, or that the, the enrollment date is equal to the execution date. If we go to attributes, there we go, full name. So we could say we create a program indicator specifically for one person's name. We say uh, this, you know, the name equals and we type in the name of the, the entity that we know. Uh, or we can say the name does not equal uh, someone that we want to isolate. Uh, we can say we don't want them to equal uh, Nicholas. So it's an indicator for everyone except it, uh, except for Nicholas. Does that kind of make sense to you, Georgie? I know you haven't spent a lot of time looking at these. Yeah, uh, when you said typing in name, do you know whether there is a specific convention of typing in the name? So should I put, let's say, single quotes or a double quotes or just a name, how it exists in the system would be would be enough to recognize in the formula? It's a good point. So try typing in Nicholas. And you see in the filter description, it says full name does not equal Nicholas. So that should be good because it hasn't shown us that there's a problem yeah. with the... Yeah. Um, and I was going to say that it was a single quote, but the thing is DHIS2 is constantly being updated to make it a little bit easier every time. So um, I know at one point uh, you would use single quotes. They might have changed that with the newest update, um, but it's something that you can, um, I would have to, to kind of look, but it's exactly, it's a point where when it's a name, it's single quotes or double quotes. Uh, the, filter the filter description looks clean, so I would say no, um, but 
depending on the version and when you watch this, um, you'd have to check yeah. yourself. Okay. Yeah, so actually it could be a tip if, if you meet, uh, let's say, an error where, while typing the name, then it might require, let's say, single quotes. Just recognize that this name is the actual value. Exactly. Okay. Cool. So I think that's good for now. That's just a little thing of, of what the difference between those two are. And um, we don't have to flog a dead horse, as it were. So I think we can uh, wrap it up there as it is. That's all for now. As always, you can get in touch with us at info at logicaloutcomes.net or on our YouTube channel, Logical Outcomes.